Hi everyone! In this video we'll take a quick look at the RCM module of Elixir and we'll start here on the patient account view and I'll walk you through the interface and then we'll take a look at the claim submission process. So we start here with the patient card which shows a summary of the, their demographic information. Then we have the financial details such as outstanding balance, we could show any paid amounts, uh, things like that. Then we have our insurance details where we may have captured primary, secondary, or tertiary insurance. And then we can run verification of benefits on that record. Um, if say it's been a year since a patient came in, they come back, you can re-verify the insurance to make sure that information is still valid and this approved status will update accordingly. Then we have our care episodes, which are like encounters. So any um, procedures or any of the activities that have happened while well, during a patient's visit are going to be recorded on that care episode and then we can bill that out once that's closed um, to a claim submission and then on insurance this is where you can add um, your primary secondary tertiary insurance um, you can set which one is the default things like that and then we have providers and the providers are either service locations or um, practitioner providers so those both will show in this list here then across the top, we have our collect payment button. This is where you would process any credit card payments if you're integrated with Stripe or Square or a payment gateway uh, or any check payments or cash, you can track those here as well. Um, we also have our cost of care calculator that runs against that insurance that we verified through the clearinghouse. You can then get their deductibles or uh, any, any information like that and run your procedures against um, those insurance balances to see what maybe the patient responsibility would be. Then we have our patient statements. These can be generated individually or we have the option to run them in batches and we customize these statements with your logo and branding so um, they have your look and feel. Then these radio buttons across the bottom here we have the claims. This shows our list of uh, all claims that are attached to this patient in particular. Then we have our procedures list. These are any procedures that have been added to this patient. Uh, our payment history that shows all of our transactional data. And then our cost of care calculation estimates. Anytime you do a cost of care calculation, you have the option to save that. And then you, uh, you may want to push this to the patient portal or something for uh, someone to view and approve beforehand. And then we have our payment schedules. Now this is for any installment amounts and whatever frequency you want for people to make payments. So next we'll go through the actual claims process. And in order to do that, we need to have a procedure added. Now this would come in from uh, either Elixir's EHR or your uh, third party EMR or whatever. If we're importing that data in, we want to capture this procedure data. So to start, we'll add a new procedure here. And then we'll select a diagnosis code. And then we enter our details related to that procedure. So our service dates or the dates of service, we'll add here. Our units or duration, whatever you have set up for those procedure codes. Uh, we'll mark that this is ready for billing we have the option to choose whether it's a professional or institutional claim type. Uh, and then that's all we need there. We'll go ahead and click save. Now we have a procedure on file and we're able to actually open a claim for that. So um, typically when you close a care episode, as we talked before, we have these care episodes that are like encounters. When that care episode is finished, um, you would then close the care episode. This would automatically generate the CMS 1500 form and you don't need to actually manually go through this process, but uh, I'll walk us through that just to see what the automation is doing on the back end. So this is gonna generate a new claim and we're gonna select uh, the CMS 1500 form here. Now we just need to enter our service dates to pick up that procedure. So if we enter the third through the third, that'll pick up that procedure code that we entered for that date. And then the billing information, this will be uh, automatically populated, so you don't need to do this, but uh, since I'm doing this manually, we'll just run through this real quick. And then we'll go ahead and save the form. And now we have a claim record saved. This will store all of the information from your CMS 1500 form. And then uh, this would actually come in in a status called ready to submit. 
So you'll have a list view of all your claims that are ready to submit. And those can all be sent off to the clearinghouse at once. But we'll do this one individually here. We'll go ahead and click send claim. And that will send off to the clearinghouse and we'll get a response. Here we got clearinghouse accepted. Now, if there was any type of issue with the data that we uh, inputted on this form, we would get either claim errors or validation errors. Now, claim errors would be something like an invalid NPI number or something that the clearinghouse is recognizing as invalid and returning a response. Then we have validation errors, which may be rule sets that we have on our side where a phone number is the incorrect number of digits and that stops it before it even gets sent to the clearinghouse. But if you get any type of claim errors from the clearinghouse, it'll tell you exactly what field and what needs to be corrected here. So we'll show an example of that here in a bit. But now that we're at clearinghouse accepted, we can then try and get the payer status because now we need to see if the actual payer is going to accept this. So it'll we'll be pinging this uh, either on a daily batch or whatever cadence you want to have that checking for the payer status through the clearinghouse. And that response is then going to come in either as payer accept, accepted or payer rejected. And similarly, if you have any claim errors or validation errors along with that, you'll see that on those tabs there. Um, now that we have our payer accepted, we can then uh, get our ERAs for that, our electronic remittance advice. So um, we'll go to a list of payer accepted claims. And again, you can do these individually or do them all in a batch. Um, we'll do it for just this one claim, but we wanna get the ERA for that. Get RA is then going to attach that record when it gets returned to the claim itself. So now we'll go again to our recently viewed. We'll open up that claim and now you'll see there's an ERA record attached. And within that ERA record, we have the response details of uh, any total adjusted amounts or anything that comes back from that electronic remittance advice. So that can be viewed here. And this is then ready for um, payment posting. So you can uh, add any actions that you want to have on, uh, on this ERA um, here on the ERA payment and postings. But before I get to that, I wanna go back to these claims list views that we have. These are the different statuses that claims can be in that we ran through kind of one by one. Now we can see um, kind of a whole list of say ready to submit claims. If you wanted to send all of these off to the clearinghouse, you could send them all off at once. These could be done automatically through a batch job. Um, and then you can view your payer rejected claims. So if for any reason uh, you're getting these, uh, these lists are stacking up of rejected claims, you can come in, go to the claim errors tab and see that place of service is required. This was not filled out. So that's just the one field you would need to correct. Um, fill in any resubmission codes that might be required and then you can resubmit this claim. So I just wanted to cover that very quickly and then we'll go look at the ERA payment postings. So from here, you have either parent ERAs or claim ERAs. So parent ERAs are going to include, it's almost the, the batch of um, if there were multiple, uh, multiple claims within um, across multiple patients, these could be bundled into one uh, parent ERA or you can view these by an individual claim, like the claim we submitted, we can then view this as uh, just by that one claim. If we open one of those records, we're gonna see the details of any adjustments that were made or actions that were to be taken. Um, if you, these are set to auto post, so these are, these are locked, but if you did not auto post, you would then be able to uh, add, you know, maybe you wanted to transfer a portion of it to patient responsibility or something like that. You have the actions that you can then take before you save and post this record. Now, once the ERA uh, has been posted, it's now ready for payment collection. So that's back under the account view where we have that collect payment button. We'll then go inside of there and we have a quick filter for insurance payments or private payments. We've landed here on insurance payments, so we can see any of those procedures that have been processed through claims that have a claim number attached. So we can select one of those and then pick your you know, mode of payment if you're doing credit card or cash or check or anything like that. If you are using credit cards and you're integrated with a credit card processor like Stripe or Square or a gateway and you tokenize your cards, you can store those tokens here and select which payment method you want uh, 
this payment to go towards. You enter an amount to be paid towards that balance, um, and then you register that payment, and that will get applied towards that line item. Once this line item is fully paid for, it then gets removed from this list of uh, open transactions. So we'll make that payment there, and that is how you process a credit card payment. Um, then lastly, I'll just go over real quick the patient statements. So these, for an individual, we're just looking at, say, a date range, um, generating any statements for any procedures that were done during that, um, that date range. These can be branded with your logos and whatever layout that you require for your statements, and then these can be uh, either emailed or printed and mailed out. So that's about it for the quick tour of RCM. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative, and have a great day. Thanks.